How's it going everybody? My name is Alex with Mountain Label Music and today we're going to go over how to connect your Stream Deck with your Dolby Atmos setup if you are using the Dadman software, especially with the Avid Matrix Studio. Now before we get into detail on how to do this, I highly recommend you check out this video here which goes into more detail on actually how to use the Dadman software with the Avid Matrix Studio. Otherwise, let's jump right into it. First things first, we are going to go to the Avid Pro audio community in which you probably have to have an account and you, we're going to find this article. Now I'll leave a link to the article itself, but what we really need from this article is this download link from Luke Howard. Shout out to Luke Howard for designating a lot of his free time to getting this set up for Stream Deck users. This is a free software. You do not have to pay anything for this. Although I kind of wish Luke would put out something for donations because I would love to donate some money to this. But either way, I'll leave a link in the description for this download link so you don't have to go and find the article or have to make it account or anything. So we're going to go ahead and do that. It's going to download in your downloads folder or wherever you put your downloads. And we're going to double click on this zip folder. And that is going to unpack it and give us a few different files here. The first one being the Stream Deck plugin itself. This actually gives us the option to use our Stream Deck like an MOM monitoring operation modules interface. The next three files are Stream Deck profiles that we load into our Stream Deck configuration. The fourth file is just some kind of licensing. I really haven't messed around with any of this. You shouldn't have to do anything. This is an as is program and it doesn't guarantee that it'll work with whatever you're using. And this last file is a readme text file. And what I did when I first downloaded this was right click open with and I just use the text edit software that's built into the MacBooks. And it tells you everything you need to know about installing and doing this on your own. Now, if you want to completely disregard the rest of this video, you can read that and figure it out on your own. But I highly recommend sticking to the end so I can give you the rundown or basically the dummy version of this. So it's pretty much foolproof. We're going to close out of this readme document. The first thing we're going to do is open our Stream Deck configuration. Once we have done that, we are going to double click on the dot Stream Deck plugin file that was in our fire folder, fire folder, file folder. <laughs> and it's going to give us a prompt that this custom action is downloaded from the internet. And it's going to ask if you are sure that you want to install it. We are going to click install. And in my case, the custom action is already installed, but you should get something along the lines on your sidebar with this dad man dial and your keys. We'll go over to the keys and you'll have some new options to choose from. Now, what you're going to do after this is click whatever profile in your file folder that corresponds with your stream deck. Now, although it does come with the basic stream deck profile, one for the Stream Deck Plus and one for the Stream Deck XL. For some reason, the Stream Deck Plus doesn't work with the Stream Deck Plus. I'm not sure why this is. Luke Howard, if you're watching this, I'm coming after you. Please give me the Stream Deck Plus profile. No, I'm just kidding. Because <laughs> the regular Stream Deck profile works fine. And what I highly recommend is figuring out what best works for you with the Dadman software and the Stream Deck and just customize it on your own. So since that is the case, we're going to double click on the dot stream deck profile file. The first thing that is going to come up is the layout that it thinks is your regular stream deck. Now I believe there are supposed to be some other buttons here that is supposed to be with a regular stream deck. But like I said, I much prefer to do my own configuration. So let's go ahead and line up some things right off the bat in the stream deck software on this right panel. We're going to click on the Dadman category and you got a bunch of different buttons and keys to choose from. Now you have output one, two, and three sources, a, B and C, a reference lock, a dimming button, a talkback button, 
a cut, a layer to switch between the four layers that are provided in the Dadman software, and an external button. You also have a volume up and down. This would be for if you have a regular Stream Deck and not the Stream Deck Plus since you can use the encoders as a volume knob. And we'll go to dials so I can show you that it does have the option for volume. Now, since I already have a version of my MOM on my stream deck, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this copy and just go over to the default profile that I have. So what I have done already is made my own pre-programmed layer. So in order to switch to a different layer, you're going to hit the layer button on your stream deck and that will switch you to layer two. We're gonna press that again for layer three and to our final layer, which is layer four. And you'll notice that some of these buttons have changed in terms of what it says on the buttons. And that's because each layer has their own keycap and you can label these according to whatever is going on in your dad man software. And what's the great part about the layer button is that you can also put a keycap on that. So when you're switching between layers, you actually know what the other buttons are supposed to be doing. Unless you have a weird configuration where every button does something completely different in which you would layer those keycaps anyways, that's up to personal preference. But for layer four, I have each of my keycaps separately as different solo buttons. So LR would mean I am soloing my left and right speakers for CTR stands for my center speaker. My LFE is soloing my LFE channel, in me meaning I hear what's going to the subs for the LFE. For the next three, it is going to be my side surrounds, my rear surrounds, and my tops, or otherwise known as my height channels. Now you'll notice that this dial knob actually says cut. This can not only control the volume for my Atmos output for my speakers, but if I press the dial down, you get also a cut, which you can program to what be whatever you want it to be. Since it already says cut and that cannot be changed in any other aspect in this software, even if you try to change it, it's going to reset to cut or whatever the color may be. I just use that as my cut button altogether throughout any of my layers. What you can also do if I press the cut button again, bringing back the Atmos output, is if I tap on the screen where the Atmos output label is, where the negative 17 and a half decibels is located, if I tap on the screen here, we also have a dim button, which dims the speakers. And if I go look back into my dad man software, you will notice that my software and my output has dimmed. So when I press it again, it brings the speakers back to full volume according to what my volume knob is at. So now that we know what we are capable of, let's go ahead and program our own layer. I'm going to first switch back to layer one. Let me show you guys on the configure stream deck. I'm gonna switch back to layer one. So now that we are on layer one, we're gonna go into our dadman software. And the first thing we're gonna make sure of is we're gonna to go to our settings and go to device list. And the key command for that is shift command L. And if you've already installed the Stream Deck plugin, which was one of the first things we had done, is you're gonna make sure that the Stream Deck unit is connected to the Dadman software. So if this checkbox under connect isn't selected, I would select that, make sure your status is unit ready and your hardware status is okay. And if it doesn't show up right here, we're gonna click this refresh button down at the top, uh, excuse me, the bottom left corner, and it should show up. We're gonna close out of this device list, go back to settings at the top, and go down to monitor profile. And the key command for that is shift command M. First thing we're gonna do is go over to the mom tab. We're going to hit this arrow down beside stream deck, which is ID number 50 in my case. And we're going to go to layer four. This is what my current layout looks like on my fourth layer. I have switch number one as my fold down in my left and right surround speakers. And the function for that is element active. So whenever I press it, it's going to activate that fold down. Now when I press it again, 
is going to disable that and bring out all of my satellite speakers plus my LFE. So for programming, we're going to start with layer one. And all of these different switches correspond to the buttons that you have in your software. You have a reference button, one through three, A, B, C, your dim button, which is your touchscreen, your talkback button, which you also have one for, your cut, which is pressing down on your dial, or if you use the cut button on the regular stream deck. You also have an external button. I've tried to use this before, and I'm not sure if it's actually worked or not. I think I had an issue. Maybe it was just how I programmed it in the past, but you do have an external button on your stream deck to use as well as these other buttons, and your level, which is essentially your dial knob. So the first thing we're gonna go to is switch number one. We're going to right click and go down to monitor. You can make this a talk back if you wish. I would just use the talk back button if that's something you wish to have on your stream deck. But we're gonna go down to monitor. And it gives you first all of these, I think five options here. Yep. To dim speakers, mute your speakers, reference lock, which is to bring back to full volume on your encoder knob, monitor delay enable and disable, and to sum your sources instead of having them as individual sources. Now again, we already have a cut, dim, and all of those other options that just come pre-programmed with the dial, as well as pre-programmed dim buttons in your stream deck that if you wish to use those options, I would. But for the others, I would use as a source change or even changing your outputs or your fold down. So these next three options would be your best bet in terms of what these switches do. So first things first, we're going to copy our fold down from layer four, just to give you an idea of what you're capable of doing. So switch one, we're gonna make our left and right surround element active. Number two, we're gonna make our monitor fold down, CTR surround element active. We're gonna do this all the way through. I'm actually going to leave A, B, and C empty just to show you what happens if you guys don't have these assigned to anything. So now that we have added those to our monitor profile for our Stream Deck, we're gonna configure our Stream Deck again. And since we're still on layer one, we're going to press these buttons and see what happens. Okay, nothing happened on the monitor profile configuration page. We're gonna close that out. But now, since we assigned button one to our left and right surround solo, that has activated on our fold down page on our monitoring settings. What happens if we press button two while that's still active? It's just going to switch over the fold down. So number two was our center speaker solo and it completely ignores the left and right surround. So when you do the fold down, you can't do multiple fold downs at the same time. To me, this is a really good option because let's say if you're wanting to differentiate what's going on between the front left and right and the rear left and right speakers, you can easily do that quickly without having to worry about turning the front on and turning the back on and back off again. It's just really nice to have. Now, if you wanna hear what it sounds like between the front left and right and the rear left and right at the same time, you would want to make a separate fold down for that. And just to reiterate, I'm not gonna go into detail on how to do the fold downs in this video. If you would like to check that out though, I'm gonna leave a video in the description on how to do that and how to use the Dadman software in general. It goes into a deep detail. It's a relatively long video, but I highly recommend it to anyone first starting out. So now what we're gonna do is press the button number two again, and we're gonna press one of the A, B, and C buttons. As you can see, nothing has happened. And that's because we just haven't assigned anything to those buttons. And that also goes with the encoder knob with the Atmos output. If I were to turn this knob right now, nothing's going to happen with the volume adjustment. And that's because we haven't assigned anything to the encoder knob. So what we're gonna do now is go back to our Dadman software, hit Shift Command M, go back to Mom, hit the arrow down at the Stream Deck, go to layer one, and we're gonna go down to level. Right click on that. We're gonna do monitor and speaker level. You can also adjust 
your sources for the volume on those. But I highly recommend just sticking with speaker level because that is essentially the last piece of the chain that's going to matter. You really want to keep your source at its regular volume and just adjust how the output is going to be managed. So we're going to select that. I'm also going to add our dim switches because if we try to add the dim, it's not going to work. It's not even going to show up on the stream deck. So we're going to go under monitor, under, under. So, <laughs> so we're going to go under dim, go to monitor and dim speakers. Let's make our cut to monitor and we're going to mute speakers and we're just going to ignore the external. So now when we go back to our stream deck configuration, now when we press the touch screen where the Atmos output and decibel level is, it'll dim our speakers. And now when we press on the dial itself, we cut the speakers out entirely. And it reiterates when you select the dial and have this volume button configured on your stream deck, and it'll give you the instructions on the bottom right here. So if you wanna also reference, which I don't think I have set up, actually I do. If you wanna reference and bring your speakers back to full volume, you press and hold the screen and that'll activate your ref. And what you can do for that as well is press and hold again, and it'll turn it back to zero. Now, the reason I don't like this is because let's say if you press and hold down on your dim button on accident, you go back to ref and in order to get back down, you can press your dim button to bring it down to whatever decibel level you have it set to, or you'll have to move down your encoder knob just to get back at what level you are monitoring at. This can create kind of a jump scare. It has to me in the beginning and I don't know. I just don't like it. That's just my opinion on it. Now that we have configured our stream deck with our dad man for these buttons to work, we can get to labeling what these keycaps are actually. So it's easier to differentiate between them and not have to go back into our dad man software even at all if we don't want to. So we see in our monitor profile configuration that the fold down for switch number one is our left and right surround. So we're going to click on button one. And be sure whenever you're selecting your keycaps at the bottom, don't put it under title. It's not going to change the number in which you want to change. Also, you have these different layers down at the bottom. You can actually go ahead and configure these however you wish. But if you're going under layer four, it's not going to change what's on layer one. So make sure you are on the correct layer that you are wanting to label, in which our case is layer one and we're going to label the keycap as LR. Now to me, LR could mean anything left and right. Some people would consider that as a stereo fold down. To me, it's just the left and right speakers. But let's say if I want someone to come in and just play around with the studio, I wanna make it easy for them to manage between the stream deck. So what I'm gonna do is go to this layer button, go into the layer one keycap, and we're gonna make this the solo layer. And at least for my perspective, I understand that this is the layer for soloing certain speakers. So now that we have that in place, we're going to go back to our dad man software and check out that switch number two is the fold down for the center speaker. So we're going to go to speak the keycap number two, layer one, and label that as CTR, which stands for center. We're gonna to go to number three and label it as LFE. Now let's say you don't wanna use this setup that I have. You want to have a talkback or maybe you wanna use this button instead of the talkback feature. You want to make it an external button and you wanna take advantage of this, I would consider it the seventh button for whatever it is you may want it to be. We're going to delete the talkback button in our stream deck and bring in external into here. So what we're gonna do to external, right click, go to monitor. Let's say we want it to be turning on or off our Atmos source before it even gets into our interface. We're gonna hit element active. Now this, when I press the button, 
should enable and disable that option in which it does. As you can see on the left of my dad main screen, go under the, to the sources, sources. I can't talk today, guys. We're going to go under the sources in our monitor page. And when I press that external button, it completely takes it out of the configuration. The only reason I don't care for that external button though, and I'm going to go ahead and unassign that. The only reason I don't care for that button is because whenever you press the button, there's no indication that it's on or off. So you just press it and it just happens. And you may be able to change that in your settings, but I just don't recommend using the external button. So we're going to delete that. And I actually use this button right here for just a clock or a timer. I think I use the task timer. And it's just nice to have whenever you're working for long periods of time. And if you're like me and don't have a sense of time, for the most part, when you're working in a studio, you get distracted and you need to take a break after a certain amount of time. Typically, I do about an hour of working and then take a break. This is nice to have that option on here, which is something you cannot do on the mom module with the avid matrix by itself that isn't the stream deck so essentially you have this device that you can do virtually anything with even outside of the dadman profile this is another option that i really like is being able to add pages especially with the stream deck plus because what i can do is take this touch screen touch it in the middle and swipe to my left and that'll actually bring me to my second page. This can be whatever you want at this point. Now, before I configured it for my Apple Music in this case, just so I could show you guys what it would kind of look like if you guys changed it up, I used to have this as my profile selector. So I could switch between various Stream Deck profiles without having to go into my Stream Deck configuration on my software on my MacBook. Now, let's say if I just wanted to go ahead and start playing my Apple Music, I can hit the top left button. And now we have music playing. But now, let's say if I was in Atmos and I want to solo the center speaker, I can press the center speaker, in which the song I'm playing right now is not in Atmos, so we're not getting inf any information on the center speaker. Same with our LFE, we have nothing going through that. Now if I turn it back off or press the LR button, we are getting the full mix once again. And I'm going to use my play, pause, skip button at the bottom right dial to stop my music. And there you have it. If you followed along with me with your Stream Deck, you now have a fully set up Dolby Atmos Stream Deck configuration. I highly recommend you just play around with this as much as you can because there are so many options that you are capable of like say if you have a pair of headphones you want to adjust the volume you can do that on layer two and three for which at whatever you want to do this is especially important for anybody working in dolby atmos even home producers that can't afford the uh, mom module let alone if it's in stock anywhere i don't even know if they sell it on sweetwater right now which is kind of crazy to me but anyways thank you guys for watching if you learned something from this video please leave a link down below and I'll be sure to leave links for everything that I've listed in this video, including the downloads and my own Stream Deck profiles, just anything that would be beneficial for you guys in this situation. I will see you guys in the next video. Yeah, I'll just call that done. And yeah, my booty has gotten bigger. The pant sizes for these are 30 to 32. <laughs> what? I'm definitely going to include that. My booty has gotten bigger. <laughs>